Oh my God. I've used but to that live drive there. also was incredible. Absolutely. You drove us from North Carolina to California in four days. It was an incredible experience. I think one of the best trips of my entire life. I had so much fun with you. We fought like cats the whole fucking time. Like every day we fought, I think. And still, it was so much fun. I had a great time. Like, I felt like we stopped in different places. We saw stuff. Really we did all things. kinds of shit. And we can go back to all of those places later. Like, when in the season that it makes sense for us to be there. And so I feel like I'm doing this because the universe is asking for it. It makes sense. It's fun. And then there's also this practice of compersion that is coming very slowly where I want you to be happy. This episode of Dear Jessamine has profanity, sex talk, weed smoking, and a bunch of other shit that's just not for everybody. You also may not agree with the stuff we say or how we say it, and we think that's great. We promote cannabis medicine to people over 21. If you're not 21, come back when you are. Hey, Jessen. Hey, Ash. How are you doing? I'm having a great morning. I don't know why. I'm glad. Why? What's what's going on for you this morning? How are you feeling? I mean, that sunrise over those mountains outside this mm-hmm. hotel room it's true. is a thing. Mm-hmm. Very impactful. I think um, we had, like, such a weird night. Yeah, honestly, yeah. the lack of sleep that I'm working with right now is probably... I'm probably doing my emotional like zoomies. Mm-hmm. I'm like exhausted. That makes a lot of sense to me. So actually, that is what I think it is. Mm-hmm. Totally. Um, okay. So so, how are you? Um, you know, I'm rolling with it. Yeah. It's I. Uh, I don't usually get so little sleep. Mm-hmm. So I think that. Uh, um, and also, we're in California now. A lot has changed since we were last <laughs> recording this show. We drove across the country, and we are now in Southern California, yeah. which is, among other things, three hours behind East Coast time. But we are still working in East Coast work schedule, and it is the last work week of 2021, which has also decided to be an incredibly busy time of the year, which mm-hmm. it always is, literally always. I'm going to just jump. I never do this, but I'm going to say what I'm calling in not instead of asking you. Um, rituals, healing, practices, rest. These are the things I'm calling in. I think I want to find... Okay, this morning I got up and I used the bathroom, washed my face, brushed my teeth, got coffee, smoked weed, sat in meditation, in nature, outdoors. I'm like, yeah, I think that's like... That's not like a good day. That has to happen. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That has to happen every day. I mean, including some more movement than I... I mean, I was out there doing a little chair yoga. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Just I did all hip openers. Oh, Oh, my God. Which is a very very hip opener time for me in this life right now. So... Definitely. um, Anyway, that's what I'm calling in. More of that. Just like the fortitude to be like, I don't care. You don't want to do it because you hate yourself. Just get up and do it. See what Mm -hmm. that's like instead, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. So I'm not always that way with myself. Sometimes I'm a little more gentle. Sometimes I'm brutal and mean and mm. shitty. Mm. So that's some kind of middle ground right there. Like, no, you can do it. Let's go. You mm-hmm. know, I like her. Mm-hmm. She's nice. Uh, and she pushes me, which is kind of what you do, honestly. That's mm-hmm. a lot of how we work together, mm-hmm. I'd say. So that's funny. Anyway, mm-hmm. how about you, baby? What you bringing in? Or what are you grateful for? Mm. What a practice say? I'm grateful that I woke up this morning. I'm really grateful for that. I'm grateful that everyone that I love, that I hold close, woke up this morning, too, it seems like, at least. Mm. Um, I'm grateful for our safety, relative or imaginary or otherwise. Mm-hmm. I'm so grateful for that. This year has been fucking crazy. This year has been way crazier for me personally than I think 2020 was. Mm. And I can't, to the point where like, I think it is still 2020. 
I'm like, is this in terms of like chaos level? Well, also in terms of pacing, like how is this year about to be over? Or no, it's yeah, it's like the end of the year. No, oh, right. Literally. So I know you had to double think it because it's so preposterous. Literally. Like, yeah. I'm just like, what? Um, but I mean, I'm calling in like just presence. I'm just trying to be here. Mm. Just trying to be in it. I'm not trying to um <clears throat> I don't have, um, we have a, come to the point where all of the like little goals that I've had for my life, mm. I've met all of them. Oh, fuck. Wow. Like we, we've come to that place. I have a lot of huge goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I realize now that the steps to those goals is literally just the same shit I've already done. It's like mm. the same thing, just on a different scale with different wow. people. Um, and it costs a different amount of money and it's in a different location. But otherwise, like, I feel like I have, I'm at a place where I can really just enjoy the process. Mm. Like, I don't need to be um, thinking like, oh, and then once this thing happens, then that thing's going to happen. Yeah. And then that thing's going to happen. Mm. And then that thing's going to happen after that. And it's just going to be the same shit. And like, that gives me a lot of comfort because it means that like, there's no reason to not just enjoy this moment. Mm. And so I'm just calling in presence. And that's really what I want to call in as we come into this new year, because I came to the end of a, um, a big astrological cycle mm. pattern uh, at the beginning of December. And during that pattern, the universe was basically like, like all the people in your life do not make sense right now. Mm. Like, and you don't know who you can trust and everything seems really like fucked up and weird. Mm. But the point of this time is to just let it be uncomfortable. Just let it be. You don't know the and answer. Confusing, it's right? con yeah. Let it be confusing. Mm -hmm. And the, and then at the end of the cycle, it was like, Oh my God, you finished this cycle. Thank you to the pattern. I feel like I shout out the pattern literally every week The they're like, um, they're like, yeah, well, congratulations on finishing this cycle. Like, now you know that it's okay for things to be confusing. <laughs> like, okay, so that was the point. Like, now I've been questioning every single person in my life. And, mm. like, now I can just say, okay, so it just can be confusing. Mm. So that combined with the fact that, like, it's just every goal is kind of the same. You, know, you just do, you just make little steps forward. And then at the end of the goal, once you reach the end, then there's a new goal. Then in that, I'm like, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to chill and enjoy. I'm mm -hmm. just going to like have my paintbrush and be like, and I feel like I'm starting all these new projects and like uh, meeting new people and like mm -hmm. uh, doing, like taking on new, like, like uh, all kinds of hobbies that I've been interested in for years, but have not had the time to like really focus on mm -hmm. are coming into my life in new ways. Mm -hmm. And then just this location change is so huge, Perfect. like even more so than this fall that we spent in uh, New England. Even more. It's so much bigger yeah, to yeah, be yeah, 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 in yeah. this place that like, it just, I don't know about you, but it feels like a hundred percent different to me than where we came from. So it's, mm -hmm. it feels like an invitation. It's an offering, an opportunity in by the, the universe year. in the new year yeah. to just be, be here now, oh, wow. be present in this now. Don't think about what it could be or what it will be later. Just be here now. That's what I'm calling in. Hell yeah, baby. Uh, should we talk about liquor in the front? Should we talk about the L word? I just have one thing that I want to say about the L word. Yep. Okay. We received a great listener question about the L word, but it is about the L word Generation Z season two. Mm -hmm. And we are still in the L word Generation Z season one. And last night when we were watching the show, like we were watching, but it was also like, I want to wait until we have mm -hmm. gotten to that part of the show to answer this question. So it's a really good question. Yeah. So there's the person is called L word watcher who sent in this question. We're going to answer it. We just need to get there on the show. We're just not there yet. And a huge part of the reason why is that we don't have great internet connectivity yet. We're still working on making. Is that house. why? Like straight up. I feel like I haven't consumed 
there's a some kind of siren or some shit happening outside beep um i have not consumed like nearly as much media since we went on the road and honestly like that has been one of my favorite parts of this whole fucking thing like people will talk about stuff that's happening but they'll be like oh did you hear about this thing and i'll be like i have no idea what you're talking about is a great example so many things made um just like everything anything that has been popular recently like i've not seen it and it's not that i love media i love television oh my god love it so much me too but i also love not feeling compelled to stream things all the time i live for it like we were at the old house used to stream like a hundred percent of the time and now it's like you're like outside or just doing something around the rig or like having a conversation or reading a book now having a tantrum or having a tantrum building a fire definitely building a fire a hammock literally walking the dog there's just a lot of other things to do but i do think that if we had more consistent cell reception then we would stream more but even like we were just dry docking in jamestown for a month-ish and what did we watch watch we watched a little bit of fleabag watch a little fleabag is amazing jesus christ the show is so good god we should be waller bridge man we can have a segment (laughs) we can have a fleabag segment no yeah fleabag might come up i love that show okay um yeah but i feel like we are just not really in that place right now but i do want to get to this question about it this because it's a really interesting thing that the l word has done on a lot of different topics i did want to say about the episode that we were watching last night Mm -hmm. is that um it was season two or season one episode three yeah Um, which you said you hadn't seen but i feel like i definitely i think we started it and maybe i fell asleep or you know i you saw the end and i didn't and i knew that on some level this was a this was was a while ago ago. yeah um but we were watching it and the last time that i've watched anything related to the l word i was not in california and so and not in the los angeles area (laughs) and last night we went to cava for dinner which is like my most favorite restaurant that you can like like chain restaurant right now Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. my personal favorite no yeah Yeah. me too it's exceptional and we're at cava and Kava is the same. Every Kava that we've been to in different parts of this country have all been the same. So can I just interject that it's basically yeah. like Chipotle it's literally or Chipotle. what was the other one we said? Anyway, <laughs> Mediterranean <laughs> Chipotle is what? Kylie, Kylie. says it's Mediterranean Chipotle. It is literally Mediterranean Chipotle. No, well, okay, so we're at Kava. Thank you. And um, the people in front of us, I just noticed the way that they ordered their food was like a very LA way to order the oh, food. Yeah. They're like, oh no, no dairy, no pita. And I was just like, man, we're what, in fucking said, LA. And he <laughs> said, we're going to, we're going to skip the pita. <laughs> no way I'm like that. No the problem is this, that I do follow an account on Instagram called overheard in LA. And it's probably one of the funnier accounts. It's just totally. Clever. Okay. <laughs> Just really, people but, just say everything. But so it's something that I feel like everyone that I am friends with and that I work with that lives in LA mm-hmm. has some shit to say about LA and LA culture. And mm-hmm. I have mostly found it charming in the past mm-hmm. because I'm like You're charmed by sh- oh, <laughs> like, a lot. Yeah. Well, I'm just like oh, Los Angeles and your health centric, celebrity obsessed folk. You know, it's like it's no big deal. It's so y'all are cute. Mm-hmm. But being here is like it hits different. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. So, okay, so am what, I gonna start judging myself soon? Is that coming damn. down the pipe? God damn! It's important to have anchor people around who question shit like that because you've been asking me about self judgment lately. Oh my god! And Literally. I think, and we came, we talked about this yesterday. I think it's just about having the people in around who you trust That's to right. hold down your values with yeah. you and be mm-hmm. like, are you holding down? Your, is that your values? Is that your values? <laughs> is it? If it is, it's good. I don't think it is. Well, you know? if I start talking about hold the pita, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you don't really, I mean, you don't do gluten all the time anyway. <laughs> no, totally. That's That wasn't a great example. But like, uh, it did make me, and then just like watching the L word. We're making fun of about, ourselves though, baby. Like we eat brown rice. Do you know what I mean? Like, no, I know. We're we at Kava. Have, <laughs> oh we have smoothies. Do you know Literally. what I mean? 
Um, yeah. <laughs> no, like, really, my good friend and I talk often about, like, we call it niggas doing white people shit, but it would be like, we'll be at a restaurant complaining about <laughs> the people in the restaurant while we are in the restaurant. Being the people. <laughs> we're like, we're the people. Am I the trauma? Yes. Um, yeah. So anyway i just was watching the show and i was looking at all the characters in a really different way and i was like i guess i was seeing myself in them in a way that mm. uh was painful <laughs> honestly oh my god say more come on <laughs> uh, well uh you know honestly there is a part of me that was watching the show from a different angle because i'm thinking about television in a different angle mm-hmm. um in the work that I'm doing right now. And so I was watching the actors and thinking about what it is to be like representing a whole community Uh. and like the pressure that comes with that. And like how Mm. we're so critical. I am so critical of portrayals of queer culture and fat culture and black culture and like whether or not it's what I identify with. And so watching, and then also that like, actors who have had less experience because they have been afforded fewer opportunities Mm -hmm. like are gonna act different than people who have had more experience and then gotten more money and then been able to pay for more things or coaching or professional development or whatever yeah totally exactly and not stress because they're also working a couple of wait wait staff jobs i'm so sorry am i um i don't know if this can be heard was there a comment about do not disturb earlier i'm just wondering um does that apply to desktop computers do you remember how tricky it was to get it on (coughs) by chance I'm sorry for the desktop as opposed to the phone. You can. Just I was sort of really just wondering down. if it was a topic that because earlier. Do you want to be? Direct? I didn't have do not disturb. Do you want to be direct? I'm being direct right happened. now. Okay. Um, I didn't have do do not disturb on my phone, and it was just doing some minimal vibrating, minimal vibrating, and you had a lot to say about it. And then no, I did not. I just asked you to put it on do not disturb because the phone is up against the computer and it's, it vibrates when you get a slack, which you get a lot of slack. That's true. Um, but we are in California and we are here because of a lot of reasons. A lot of reasons, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of reasons. I think so. That have brought us out here. Um I think the biggest thing is probably just the universe. Literally. <laughs> I'm like, you just said all this shit about how profound the impact has been already mm-hmm. on you, right? And mm-hmm. I'm like, Definitely. that's the number one reason. It's got to be, right? I think it was time for a huge change. Huge, huge, like, not a little change. Man, mm-hmm. I'm so grateful on the note of being grateful for things. How honestly, very gently, these changes are sort of rolling in. I don't mm-hmm. know. I got to wake up with you in my arms this morning. I feel like that's <laughs> not a given. Feel me? You know what I'm saying? Why I do. Why are you smiling like that? Because you like barely woke up with me in your arms. But okay. You want to talk about it? <laughs> we can if you want to. Yeah, there's just a lot of, there's a lot of, what is, what is it? There's a lot of energy. That's a, that's mm-hmm. for sure. That's like a mm-hmm. thing for sure. For sure, for sure. There's a lot of energy. We brought rain to Southern California. <laughs> oh my God. We brought <laughs> just rain, been raining both cold, times. literally. Um, <laughs> whatever. You're welcome. It's the ocean and the fucking fire oh, coming man. together. It really is. Okay. Jeez. OP. Okay. So that there is a lot of change afoot. I feel like there's also a lot of um, unrest. Is unrest dramatic? It's not unrest. It's called, what is it called? Um, There's a lot of like uh, chaos. Chaos. That's a good one. Yeah. I couldn't sleep last night. I don't know why. I, I'm doing this thing where I'm like acknowledging that I'm 32 years old and that I can't drink coffee. I hate that I'm saying this. Mm-hmm. Former barista, I feel like. Anyway, can't drink coffee after like 2 p.m. Or else I will not mm-hmm. sleep well, get to sleep well. I won't be able to fall asleep. That didn't happen. I don't know. You know, so the only thing I can think is like we are getting closer to what you may have started to say was the reason we came out here. Yeah. Um, which is that, um, I want to be closer to this person that 
I'm dating. And that is me trying to like respect and honor the fact that you, that was probably what you were going to say first. And Mm -hmm. I know that that's a huge part of what you're experiencing that we've talked about is that there's a lot of emotions that come along with the things that we're doing, Mm -hmm. specifically you having a partner who has a new partner and wants to be around that partner and Mm -hmm. wants to use the fact that we have this flexible lifestyle to incorporate her into my life in a way that's more felt and close than just, um, than long distance. Mm -hmm. And my question to you is why are you doing this? Why am I doing what? Why are you moving our house to this place for the next chunk of time? Honestly, Mm -hmm. like straight up. Mm -hmm. um, I think because I'm a martyr often because I behave like a martyr. And I think that I felt backed into a corner when you came back from visiting your new girlfriend and said that you wanted to immediately bring us closer to her. And uh, I felt like it was really different from what we had discussed doing. And I understood the reasons for doing it. And I could have at that stage, if I was like, if I was less interested in adventure and surprise and just like doing, just like going with it, Mm -hmm. I think that's the stage when I could have been like, this is over. We need to part ways. Like, you should go and figure out what you need to do. And I should go and figure out what I need to do. But I mean, truth be told, I had wanted to go to California from the jump off. Mm -hmm. Like, we could have left North Carolina the first time and gone to California. I'm so glad that we went to New England. That was amazing. But um, I always wanted to come out here. And I don't think there's a reason for us to linger in the middle of the country um, in the winter, winter, which we learned on the way here. It was cold as fuck through the whole center of the country. And also just like random the whole country. And you and you were like, it's not like you were like, do you want to just like hang out in a random part of Texas? You want to just like be in New Mexico? Because I don't. New Mexico was blustering cold. Like it was, oh my God. But that drive also was incredible. You drove us from North Carolina to California in four days. It was an incredible experience. I think one of the best trips of my entire life. I had so much fun with you. We fought like cats the whole fucking time like every day we fought I think and still it was so much fun a great time like I felt like we stopped in different places we saw stuff we did all kinds of shit and we can go back to all of those places later like when in the season that it makes sense for us to be there and so I feel like I'm doing this because The universe is asking for it. It makes sense. It's fun. And then there's also this practice of compersion that is coming very slowly where I want you to be happy. Mm. And that's what I think I could have said from the beginning is like, well, you know, you came back and you were like, I really want to be closer to this person. And I'm like, I could have been like, yeah, oh my gosh, we're Polly. And I just, I want you to be happy. And I just love you. No, bitch. I am selfish just like every fucking body else. I am just as jealous. I have just as many. The person who is like, I can never be Polly like this. I just, this is too much. I feel every single emotion that that person feels. And so from that, place I was like like fuck you you want to be closer to this person that you just met like go be closer to her like why do I need to be closer to her and so there's this practice of compersion that's coming where I'm like if we are in union together if we're committing to one another if we're down for each other part of me being down for you is wanting what's best for you and I think that the thing that more so than this person or this location or anything related to like where we are physically now, the thing that I have noticed you choosing since like mid November is yourself. Yeah. Really thinking about you and what you want. Yeah. And that is something that I think you have not been doing. 
I have not like witnessed you do 30 anything. years. Yes. Yeah. And it has definitely been a hallmark of our relationship that you focus on what I'm interested in and focus less on what you're interested in. And I'm not interested in that kind of relationship. Right. But I definitely have gotten used to that kind of relationship. What do you mean? Like I take advantage of the fact that you are often not th- not putting yourself first. And I see myself doing it. Mm-hmm. And I don't want for you to feel that way. And this is the, we were talking about this this morning. This is a similar problem that I've had with my other partner. That they also are like, I have to choose myself, period. It can't be about our relationship or like what Jessamine needs. And so I guess another part of why I'm doing this is to stop being so selfish to like, but also to be very selfish at the same time. How's that? To choose me. You know, like to go on an adventure. Yeah. To say, I don't really, it doesn't have to be about the relationship. I've always felt that. And then I end up in codependent relationships every single time. I, but I've always, and they get fucked up because I've always felt as though I don't need to be like, I need to be focused on myself. And then it becomes that I'm selfish. What did we talk about on the balcony <clears throat> this morning? codependency what did you say to me what was your question for yourself why do I keep pulling people into my crap shell who then have to claw their way out it was actually do I have to keep which I think is an important difference yeah not why but is this what I want? Is this what I'm going to keep doing? Is this what how, the only way I can do this? This is That's what I heard you say. Is that right? That is right. What did you say that came up for you this morning? Hold on. Um, my thing was about how last night after I talked to my girlfriend, I came back in and you <sighs> wanted space for me like physically you didn't want affection from me and I took it really hard and um, I can't just it's like I'm working toward well my question similar question came to me in the middle of the night when we were up at various stages was do I have to is this the only way I can be in relationship like do I have to have big explosive experiences of other people's pain you know and I, I feel like me coming in you not wanting to touch me for me was like a deep rejection that I and the what really happens is you went outside to smoke weed and I was like don't leave me in here all by myself just because you're mad that da 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 and so I don't like when you leave the space I typically will leave also because I don't like being left and so if I leave too then you didn't leave me we both left (laughs) So I, my question was around that kind of stuff. Like, will I always feel compelled to not put my best interests first, not think of myself, not um, just be able to chill and let you have your own experience or whomever, you know? Do I have to be so codependent, basically, emotionally and otherwise? But it was around, like, the self-control of other people having emotions that I don't have to be a part of. It's not always a public fight, you know? I thought you also said that you do you have to keep having relationships where you are like it's like three years it's good and then at the end of three years you're like this is too much work I gotta go right that's what I said yeah and that it felt similar to me saying like is the only kind of relationship that I can have one where I pull someone into my crab shell and then they have to find a way to claw them, claw their way out of it. What your the image that you brought up made me think of is like, 
like watching crabs like go back like back up into their shell and they have this like big one I guess it's the hermit crab I'm sure there's a lot of crabs mm-hmm. but anyway I've seen this kind of crab where they like have one big claw and they like shut themselves in or whatever mm-hmm. totally. and I had this image when you were saying that of like sitting on the beach next to your shell and like putting my hand out and holding your big claw <laughs> and it was like your door was like a jar and I could hold it while we were just watching the sunset on the beach you know because I don't want to be in your crab shell anymore. And it's not because I don't want to hold your claw. You know? I do. So, yeah, we're working on that. That's part of why I'm here. And if I can just offer a brief astro thought of the week. For that. <laughs> you don't have to be brief. <clears throat> Venus, the planet of love and beauty and the sweet things. Venus stations retrograde in Capricorn and it's supposed to do it when we get up north where your girlfriend lives totally and uh, it feels like a watershed of some sort Mm. I have wondered if we're supposed to not be together anymore we talk about it a lot yeah that's not new I just want to keep pointing out the things that are actually not new sometimes you'll be like you're only being affectionate because you just talked to your girlfriend and I'm like I'm affectionate 24 fucking 7 it's a hilarious tiktok joke that we constantly reenact about is it kissing time (laughs) so I just don't want you to forget that I am a very affectionate person I'm always trying to be affectionate with you I want for you to be present to my truth which is that I don't when you've been with your girlfriend, it's hard for me to feel like you would then feel really affectionate toward me. And this is just based off of my personal experience sure. that I usually need like a little bit of breathing space between me, between another person, between partners. And for you to come back and immediately be really affectionate with me feels inauthentic. It feels fake to me. Mm. And that is what I was reacting to last night it was like, I felt like you were being fake with me and I couldn't trust it. And I felt like I didn't, I didn't more than anything. I didn't want you to feel like you had to be fake with me. That was it. I was like, I'm not one of your girlfriends that you have to like do that with. I mean, like I disrespectful what you just said. I know, but I'm also like trying to say it from a place of like, we're really similar. You know what I mean? Like I have been not in this way and you know it. I'm, I, I want you to receive me just like you want me to receive you. Yeah, I hear you. And I understand that you feel like it's disingenuous. But when I'm saying it's like it's not, like I'm telling you that I know my feelings better than you. Mm -hmm. And that your fears around me being disingenuous with you does not make them so. Mm -hmm. And so I want to hold that and back up and not touch you when you, you know what I'm saying? Like I want to receive you in the sense that like I want to give you what you need, which is space. But I also want you to hear me say, it's not what you, that's not right. That's not what's happening for me. I feel that. I want to say more, but I also don't want to be like, I mean, we're, we talk about all of these things and I guess I, what I want to say next, I just want to be mindful of the fact that it's not, uh, I don't know if it's the most balanced thing I've ever said in my life. But I feel like we've known each other for a really long time. Yeah. I've known you through partnerships with other people. Before we were together, I've known you Mm -hmm. with other people. Mm -hmm. And there are ways that you've been in relationships with other people that I've been scared of showing up in our relationship. There are ways that I have been in other relationships Mm -hmm. that I like, I see the ways that they crop up in this one. And I'm just like, I don't care for it. Can you give an example? from me or from you? whatever um context well we've talked about this but one of the things that i noticed you doing with your last two partners before me is that you would like don't fuck your friends sorry go ahead <laughs> exactly really? um that you would be like when you were already talking to somebody else you would like amp up the attention that you were giving to that you person that. on social media. You totally did. Like, oh, I see what you're saying. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I and I was like, I was watching you do it, especially at the end <laughs> with one of them. I was like, okay, 
Jessamine, when the clock strikes this in your life, like oh, wow. you can, you saw it coming, you know? So that there are things that you do that I'm like, it's just like fuck boy shit. It's shit that mm. I do. You know what I mean? And like, that's what it felt like last night was like, you don't have to be, we're, we're mm. fuck boys together. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're no. date. No, I don't want that. Okay. Her. That's not what I'm doing no more. I feel you former fuck boy to former fuck boy. Yes, mm-hmm. maybe recovering fuck i'm just not the energy isn't there for it for me anymore do you know what i mean but i know the ways if that's what you're talking about i hear that i'm i'm so two things on that number one i have i run interesting maybe coincidentally i have posted significantly i mean dramatic exponentially less about you Mm -hmm. in the past several months Mm -hmm. and it's because if you scroll back farther it was literally just you after you after you after you after you after you, after you mm. on my Instagram because I take beautiful pictures of you, but it's you're the o- you're the only subject, you know what I mean? And like these are these are tiny little clues into what you were saying earlier about like, and what I'm saying mostly about like I want to be next to you, I want to hold your crab claw mm-hmm. on the beach and watch the sunset you know, but I don't want to be in the crab shell anymore. Mm -hmm. And this is a part of my slow journey about that is that like, I painfully hold back from posting beautiful pictures. I take you, I still take them. I take a lot less though also. Mm -hmm. And all of that is a part of this healing journey. And what sucks is that, or maybe it doesn't suck. Maybe it's because you and I are who we are, that we're asking these big questions of ourselves in relationships Mm -hmm. with each other. Mm -hmm. And that we're willing to say like, I'm willing to say, I'll say this. I'm willing to say, and you said it today, that we don't want that anymore. And that I want you on some level, at least, to hold me accountable. That's why I'm telling you. Or else I just keep it to myself, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that feels like why I'm doing this right now, too. You know, I'm just staying on that theme, I guess, for today. Why I'm in California, why I'm, man, my friend, very good friend of mine, One time I was having like a chat with her and I hadn't spoken to her since she initiated a divorce with my other friend. Mm. And it was a fine divorce, clean, there were children involved. So it was like everybody was slow moving and like got to compromise, you know, do the whole thing. But I was having coffee with her and she said to me like, look, nobody knows why I would just all of a sudden after 20 years tip the apple cart. Mm. But believe me that if I did it, it's because I had to, you know. Mm-hmm. And that has just stuck with me, just the image of tipping over an apple cart. I've never heard that expression. It's probably mm-hmm. something Southern. I don't know. Tell me if y'all know, whatever. She's real Southern. She's so good. But um, she's a powerful woman, this this lady I'm talking about. She inspires me constantly. It doesn't matter. The point is, similarly, I'm like checking with myself. Like we have these things we say to ourselves. Sometimes you say you just want to be worthy of the job. It like puts it all in perspective. I feel like when I say that, like I wouldn't be doing this unless I had to mm-hmm. kind of thing. I feel better about all of this. That like this is my yoga. And then if you're ever yoked with anybody else in this life, that becomes your yoga. You know what I mean? That's what you chose, that's what the universe chose, that's what the cosmos chose, whatever. Mm-hmm. But that like complaining about it or talking about it like you need to sit in the shittiness of it is an agreement at the end of the day. Mm. You know? For me. This is what I'm talking about for mm-hmm. me. This is how I'm experiencing the hardness of the different things that are coming in this decade, mm-hmm. you know? I completely agree with you. And I also think that it's literally all like phases. Like totally. it's not, none of this is like, it's a, there's so much to think about and be consumed by in this life. Like to focus on any one thing is an agreement for sure. Um, But I also think that if you don't feel the fullness of all of it, it's really hard to actually move forward or do anything different or be moving beyond anything else. And I think the difference between you and I often is that you move really fast and I move really slow. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm not moving as fast as you would like, or when you don't offer, when you don't slow down f- for me, mm. that's where our conflict comes. Mm. Is that how you, that's so helpful. That's such a helpful 
idea, image, concept for me. Because ultimately, I'm like, yo, I've been where you are. I feel you. Like, it is it is so hard to balance more than one partner. It is so mm. hard. Yep. It's why, literally, I've said I can't have more than two partners that I'm, like, giving my full attention to. If I'm giving, and it's not my full attention, and I'm not doing it that well. You know what I mean? So, like, I look at what you're doing, and I'm like, forever long. If it doesn't keep working, it won't keep working. But, like, it's, I'm good. You know what I mean? Like, I have my feelings, but, like, I'm good. Move on. Do something else. But there are times where it is hard. And mm -hmm. I think that when it is hard, it's allowed to be hard. But if yeah. it's hard in a way that you're like, I cannot take you, it being hard for you like this anymore, then like, move on. Of course. And that's not how this commitment works for me. Do you know what I mean? Like, if it's hard for you, and it's hard for us, that's, it's just hard for us right now. And you really taught me so much, especially in showing me such intimate parts of your relationship with your other partner, I feel like there is a, uh, a set of experiences that I've never had in having like a decade long relationship, you know, a decade plus. And it's always possible for me to like check in with that relationship on, on some level inside of myself and like think about what, what would you and them do mm -hmm. right now? Like what, like how might you and them, your other partner, mm -hmm. experience this together right now? Like what kind of conclusion might fantasy? I have no idea. I don't really know them very well even, you know, but like, I do know that it's sometimes what I do to check in on something I, I know about as a touchstone to just imagine new possibilities, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's a relationship that I really admire and that's not a given. Let me yeah. tell you what's not a given is admiring your metamor, even if they don't really care for you. I admire y'all and I admire. <laughs> Thanks for laughing. <laughs> I admire y'all <laughs> and the way you work through stuff and the way mm. you're fucking down for each other. It's a given. Mm. It's never going to change. Mm. It was like, don't play games. Like, y'all don't even know it. Y'all don't know me like this. Like, whatever. I feel like y'all's relationship. They don't love you like I. Precisely. So. Mm. It's beautiful to see. Mm -hmm. And it's a huge part of why, honestly, like my poly, I think works like this. It's a huge part of why I'm attracted to you is because I see you in relationship. Kind of like what you were saying. You saw me in relationship. You're like, uh, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> I see you in relationship with them. And, you're, and I'm like, yeah, that's nice. I'll take it. Well, I will say that they and I, two things. Mm -hmm. One, you and I have much more direct clear conversation clear of communication than i have ever had with them we're working on it now mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they and i we started seeing each other when we were much younger mm -hmm. and did not know how to communicate the way that we do now because of the partnerships that we've had with other people mm -hmm. and so a -A -A -A. yeah totally literally yeah. so um but like you and i talk about our other relationships way more at least at this stage yeah. than they and I did at this stage. Mm -hmm. At this stage, they and I did not talk about the details of the shit of the people that we were with because it's too close to the bone. It was like, don't ask, don't tell. Yeah. We had a deep don't ask, don't tell policy. Yeah. And now we talk about everything. Which is a thing. I mean, some yeah. people in partnerships, like that's easier, better, like mm -hmm. less triggering. Honest to God, I have wanted it at different moments in this process Literally. with you back and forth. Mm -hmm. Literally. <laughs> it's just ultimately not my, it's, I can't, I'm, it's not sustainable for me. It is sustainable for me. Yeah. I don't mind don't ask, don't tell. Yeah. But, um, but the other thing about my relationship with my other partner is that we went through what you and I are going through now like a similar version of this like we went through a period of years where we fought a lot mm -hmm. and I think that that is just a part of deepening a relationship I, it might not be or can be it seems like it is because I feel like I see lots of married people and people who mm. like have children and they get to a certain point in their relationship and shit just like pops off and like something happens some things happen mm. and like the relationship either makes it or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And like, if it makes it, it is so much stronger on the other side yeah. of that. That's why people be celebrating like 30 years, 35 years, 50 years. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Right. In 50 years, the shit that you have been through with another person is 
outrageous. Y'all were not smiling every day. Like, not at all. No, right. Especially not if there were children involved. So, like, For I just 50 feel like years, think about that. World wars. At this point, anybody no, 50 literally. years married has experienced a lot. But just in your relationship, you had world wars. True. Anyway, we've been Civil on the mic wars. for quite a long time. And Not too long. Yeah. I do want to just say one. One. I just want to yeah. say um, a shout out to this person that we're just kind of talking about a lot these last few weeks. Mm-hmm. And um, I know that she listens to the show and I just, there's something about just like talking about her and not acknowledging anything else that feels kind of hard for me. So that's really it. It just feels weird to just like talk about her and not. I don't think it's unreasonable for you to shout her out. You can say her name if you want to. I'm not going to do that. Okay. Well, to that special listener who is (laughs) in every story. (laughs) And also to those other special listeners who are like, those bitches for real will just come up on here and talk about your personal life and you don't want it to happen. Anyway, um. So shout out to your other partner also because mm-hmm. that met him more that I admire. I, what I admire is that they do not listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally so funny that like my, I would want my person to listen every week mm-hmm. and she does. And you would want your person not to and they don't. All right. See ya. See you later. <laughs> Dear Jessamine is produced by Tenderfire Media. For more on our show, follow us on Spotify and Instagram at Dear Jessamine, or head over to our website, dearjessamine.com. If you're an Apple podcast person, you can subscribe to our show. And while you're there, write us a review. They really help us out a lot, and they give you a place to let folks know how you feel about our show. Here's our team. Kylie C. Roberts is our editor slash producer. Angel Foster and Naya Williams do our social media. Jamie Leppard draws our art, and Fruit Snack plays our theme song. Montez Mickles is our director of production. Anna Rooney is my chief of staff. Amber Richardson is Ash's chief of staff. Ash Danger Phoenix is my co-host and co-producer, and I am Jessamine Stanley. And we believe that no one should be in jail for weed. Tender fire. Drop page.